প্রার্থনা করি our father in heaven আমাদের সর্বস্ব পিতা bless us as we study আমাদের শিক্ষা দিন আশীর্বাদ করুন i ask in the name of jesus আমি যিশু নামে চাই amen so in the last two days of sanctuary তো গত দুই দিনে ধর্মধাম ক্লাসে we talked about children and God's purpose in the sanctuary. আমরা সন্তানদের নিয়ে কথা বলছি এবং ধর্মধামের পিছনে ঈশ্বরের উদ্দেশ্য নিয়ে কথা বলছি. We talked about the blood and God's purpose in the sanctuary. এবং ঈশ্বরের ধর্মধামের উদ্দেশ্যের মধ্যে রক্ত নিয়ে কথা বলেছি আমরা. I hope you will forget those things. আশা করি যে তোমরা এগুলো ভুলবে না. But now we're going to talk about something different. কিন্তু এখন আমি অন্য ভিন্ন কিছু নিয়ে কথা বলবো. We're going to talk about clothing and the sanctuary. আমি এখন পোশাক করেছিল যেটা ছিল আরো নত Sometimes if you see artwork of Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden they look like they're just naked. But apparently they wore something like a robe of light. And they lost this robe when they sinned. তখন তারা কি করছিল পোশাক এখন তোমরা যদি এরকম মনে করো যে তাদেরকে এই আইডিয়াটা কে দিয়েছে দে মাইট হ্যাভ গট আপ ফ্রম ওয়ান অফ দ্য স্মলেস্ট বার্ডস अराउंड হিয়ার তারা হয়তো এটা পাইছে যে এইখানকার সবচেয়ে ছোট পাখি থেকে হ্যাভ ইউ অবজার্ভ দ্যাট লিটল বার্ড দ্যাটস अबाउट দিস বিগ হুজ টেইল গোস আপ এন্ড হি হ্যাজ কাট অ্যান অরেঞ্জ অন দ্য টপ অফ হিজ হেড তোমরা কি ওই পাখিটা দেখছো পাখি লেজটা উপরের দিকে গেছে এবং মাথায় কমলা কালার আছে There's probably 50 of them that live along this road. এখানে প্রায় 50 টার মতো আছে এখানে আশেপাশ দিয়ে থাকে. They got kind of a whitish gray face with a little bit of orange on the top. তাদের মুখটা অনেকটা সাদা ধূসর বর্ণের এবং মাথার উপরে কমলা রং আছে. In English we call them a tailor bird. The word tailor like someone who sews clothes. এই এই পাখিগুলোকে আমরা ইংলিশে বলি tailor bird বা দর্জি পাখি। তারা ওই যারা ওই যে সেলাই করে ইফ ইউ ফাইন্ড देयर नेस्ट তোমরা যদি ওদের আশা পাও ইট লুকস লাইক দে নো হাউ টু সো এটা দেখে মনে হয় যে তারা যেন সেলাই পারে দে টেক পিসেস অফ প্ল্যান্টস এন্ড দে উইভ देम টুগেদার তারা গাছের এক একটা অংশ নয় এবং একসাথে বুনে দে মেক আ নেস্ট লাইক দ্যাট এবং তারা ওটা দিয়ে সুন্দর ঘর তৈরি করে সো আদম এন্ড ইভ কুড হ্যাভ লার্নড ফ্রম দ্য বার্ডস अबाउट দ্য আইডিয়া অফ সোইং প্ল্যান্টস সো আদম এবং হাবা তারা পাখির কাছ থেকে হয়তো শিখছে যে কিভাবে সেলাই করতে হয় বাট গড মেড देम समथिंग মোর সাবস্ট্যানশিয়াল কিন্তু ঈশ্বর তাদেরকে আরো ভালো কিছু তৈরি করে দিয়েছিলেন গড গেভ देम एनिमल स्किन ঈশ্বর তাদেরকে ইয়া পশু চামড়া দিয়েছে সো দিস ইজ ওয়ান রিজন আই ডোন্ট ইউজ দ্য ওয়ার্ড ভিগান আর এই জন্য আমি ভিগান শব্দটা ব্যবহার করি আই ইউজ দ্য ওয়ার্ড প্ল্যান্ট বেস আমি বলি নিরামিষভোজী 
No. I don't eat dead animals. Shakahari bully. Karna Ami Murito Poshukhaina. But I'm not against the sometimes wearing of leather. Kinto Ami Oi Chamra Kapur Porate of Moto Bully. But if I wear leather, Kinto Ami to the Chamra Poshakur, I want to remember that first time that people wore leather. Tahon Ami Monakote said, Put home by Jokon Manush. It was to show them that they were dependent on someone to die in their place. When you wear leather, you're wearing the skin of someone else. It's a symbol of being covered with Christ's righteousness. Do you have any questions about that? If you have your Bibles with you, uh, it's Exodus 28. Isaiah 28, and we'll look at verse 1. Twenty-eight in verse one. And you shall take Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. So Aaron had four sons. Just a short time after this, two of these sons died. They were a little bit drunk. So they didn't follow God's directions about the fire. And so God destroyed them. After that, Aaron only has two sons. Verse 2. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. What are Aaron's clothes for? For honor and beauty. Yeah, it's, it's to show his, his character and to be beautiful. Look at verse 3. And you shall speak to all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which you shall make. A breastplate. An ephod. A robe. A broidered coat. A mitre. And a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. Did Ellie already study with you about the breastplate and the stones? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay, then I won't go more into that. Mm -hmm. But I want to say something about this glory and this beauty. When God told them to make an altar for the burnt offering, He said, don't use stones that have been shaped. He said, don't use stones that have been shaped. 
Use stones of their natural shape. He said, and when you make the altar, don't make steps to it. Do any of you remember why he said don't make steps to it? Look at Exodus 20, verse 26. We'll look at chapter 20, verse 25 and 26. If you will make an altar of stone, don't make it of hewn stone. For if you lift up a tool upon it, you pollute it. And neither shall you go up by steps into my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. <coughs> so the high priest has clothes. And if you're, and if you're standing near him, or far from him, he's modest. You won't see anything you shouldn't see. But when you go up steps, if you have a very long dress, and the steps are dirty or bloody, you want to pick up your skirts a bit. Right? You don't want to get your clothes in that mud or blood. And if you're standing near, and the priest is here, and he pulls up his skirt, I don't know what you'll see. But God said, don't do it. It's because of modesty. It gives you an idea of how he thinks. This isn't the local culture. Because the Egyptians typically didn't wear anything from the waist up at all. And this is God's culture. He is the one that gave the clothes in Genesis. And he's the one that says here, don't use steps. Now look at Revelation chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And gird about the chest with a golden girdle. So this is Jesus. He's in heaven. John sees him there. And what's he wearing? Is it a mini skirt? No, it's all the way down to the foot. Uh, is this because someone gave him a rule and he's following it? No, he's the lawgiver. He makes the rules. So this is his choice. 
What I'm trying to show you is that the sanctuary was a place that illustrated many of God's principles. Did it illustrate anything about dress? It did. It showed that you should have quality clothes. But simple clothes. The priest often wore a linen garment. Okay. That's quite comfortable in a hot climate. So, so I love this idea that God has filled my life with symbols about his love. My clothes remind me that I need a covering. Because of my sin, I need a covering. This covering won't get me to heaven. But it can remind me of the covering that I need to get to heaven. Do you understand the idea? So it's not just clothes. But that's a good example. We want to see something else about this. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 2. It's 22 5. It says, The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord your God. It's a pretty serious verse. There are lots of things called sin in the Bible. But there aren't many things called abomination. An abomination, it seems like it's something so terrible that it leads to the downfall of society. So homosexual sex is called abomination. And if humans have sex with animals, that's an abomination. But what's abomination in this verse? It's a man wearing what pertains to a woman. And a woman wearing what pertains to a man. Yes. So sometime when the woman wear jeans and t shirt. You can say in English and then translate it in the moment. Jeans and t shirt. Is it an abomination? Jeans and t shirt for it. So you ask the question, so I'm going to give an answer. Uh, God hasn't specified what kind of clothing is considered feminine and what kind is considered masculine. My wife wants me to wear a, is it called lungi? Lungi, yes. Lungi. Yes. Lungi. Lungi. How do you want me to wear it? If I wear a lungi, it's masculine in this country. In America, it's not so masculine. It would be feminine there. So the Bible doesn't specify for this reason because things vary place to place. <coughs> 
কোন কাপুর কি কার কারণ এটা এক একটা জায়গার উপরে নির্ভর করে There certainly was a time when jeans and t-shirts were considered masculine. এমন একটা সময় ছিল যে সময় জিন্স এবং টি-শার্ট ছেলেদের কাপড় বা পোশাক হিসেবে বলা হতো। And I can't speak to the way people see it today. এবং আমি এখন ওইটা বলতে পারবো না যে হয় মানুষের দৃষ্টি ভঙ্গি এখন। But I can say we don't want to ask what is the bare minimum I can do. কিন্তু আমি এটা বলতে পারি যে আমি কতটুকু যেতে পারি কতটুকু ছোট যদি সবচেয়ে ভালো কাপড় হয় এবং এটা যদি আমার প্রশ্ন এইটা না যে আমি এর কত কাছাকাছি যেতে পারি খারাপ না হয়ে It's a bad question. It's a bad, bad question. You understand what I'm saying? It's better that we ask what is the best. It's better that we ask what is the best. It's better that we ask what is the best. It's better that we ask what is the best. It's better that we ask what is the best. When Heidi and I talk about these things, we've said that if you are wearing uh, pants, then you should wear a long top. তাহলে একটা লম্বা টপ পরা উচিত and they should be feminine looking pants এবং ওই প্যান্ট গুলো হওয়া উচিত মেয়েলি দেখতে if they're the kind of pants that are fairly tight to the skin এবং যদি এই রকম প্যান্ট হয় যে প্যান্ট গুলো পায়ের সাথে লেগে থাকে they should be a very long top তাহলে ওই টপটা হওয়া উচিত অনেক লম্বা if it's a shorter top then it should be loose pants আর যদি টপটা হয় ছোট তাহলে প্যান্টটা হওয়া উচিত লুজ that's just Heidi and I talking ছেলেদের I've talked to lots of men about this. I mean, on egg push the bottom of the second. And men have quite conservative ideas about women's dress. So, uh, at the Mohila Camel Capo for Beta near Catarone for the Shilhana. Many of those same men will walk outside without a shirt. I know Yaki Dorone Purush by the other from church. So, I think they haven't been thinking about the right topic. So, I am a Mohila as a short topic piece in the book. Yes. So, like according to this verse can we say like this that those g- girls who were wearing um, like masculine clothes but acting as masculine and those pe- those men who were wearing feminine clothes but acting as feminine yeah we call it cross dressing or transgenderism yeah those are definitely an abomination আমি বলছি কি যে তাহলে ওইখানে পদ অনুযায়ী তাহলে এমন মেয়েরা যারা পুরুষের কাপড় পরে পুরুষের মতো ব্যবহার করতেছে এবং ছেলেরা মেয়েদের কাপড় পরে মেয়েদের মতো ব্যবহার করতেছে তাহলে কি এটা খারাপ আমি বলছি কি হ্যাঁ এটাকে বলা হয় কি জানি না There was a large collection of clothes called unisex. এমন কিছু কাপড় ছিল যেটাকে বলা হতো ইউনিসেক্স। Maybe it's right here. যেটা হচ্ছে একদম মাঝখানে। Clothes that can be worn by either. এমন কিছু কাপড় যেটা সবাই পরতে পারে। That doesn't match the principles of Deuteronomy very well. আর এই যে দ্বিতীয় বিবরণের যে নিয়ম নীতি গুলো আছে এটা সাথে মিলে না। Deuteronomy looks like that God expects genders to be easy to recognize even at a distance ishar bolchen je ishar chan je lingo jano dur thekeo dekhe chena jay i in a similar category as as gender dress is the issue of hair length i didn't understand like similar to wearing masculine and feminine clothes is the question of having long or short hair and is it a male kapur pushar kapur eta sathe ekirokom hocche amader chuler dorgho 
When the Bible talks about this, it says that even nature teaches you that for a lady, having long hair is beautiful. But for a man to have long hair is shameful. But we don't live in an age like that anymore. Now the man can have long hair. And people will say that's beautiful. And the ladies can have a butch, like a really short hair. And people will say that looks so beautiful on you. So cute. But I'm saying to you that God wanted a plain distinction between male and female. He wants men to act and to dress and do their hair in a way that's masculine. And he wants ladies to act in a way and dress in a way and do their hair in a way that's feminine. And if we practice that, it leads to much, a much easier time for children to grow up with pure minds. It's the confused dressing that's one of the seeds that produces homosexual attractions. But uh, in this country, many men work away from home. When they do that, it often creates in their little boys a desire for same-sex attraction. Like a boy that grows up with a distant father is more likely to become gay. That's been shown statistically. That's because he really craves having his father around. And while his when puberty happens, he gets confused because of his craving. I hope you understand. If you have any question about this topic? Many questions. I have many questions, but I will not ask now. So this is about the sanctuary. When you come to the sanctuary, and you see the priests, what you see is beautiful, but it's not showy. They're not wearing very decorative, flamboyant hats. Not royal robes. It's simple. But the high priest has a little bit of gold. He has a simple mitre, like a, a little a little uh, ring around his head that says holiness to the Lord. And that shows his position. And he has those 12 gemstones. Which shows that God treasures his people as close to his heart. So what were the clothes for? Beauty and glory. And the whole sanctuary was constructed so that it would be modest. Any questions before I go on to a different topic?
Yes, that's can, right. Will you one day please, please give a lecture on how and where, where in Bible we can find that homosexual or this transgender thing is bad according to our Bible? It's so you can translate that. I mean, I'll just look at it since I brought it up. I'm going to say that 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 i I have an article about that at my website. I'm a website at the article as I think it's called the Bible on Homosexuality. But I'll show you two of the of the major passages. Look at Romans chapter one. Romans chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 21. Romans 1, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Neither were they thankful. But they became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened. They claimed to be wise, but they became fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. These three verses describe the rise of idolatry. They began with people who knew God. But they didn't care to honor him. And their way of thinking became corrupted. And they began to make idols in the image of nature. Not Step one. Step two starts in verse twenty-four. Ah, it is also step one. Even step two, but the third part of the chapter will be still a twenty-fifth chapter. For this reason, God gave them also up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Ei karoni ishar tahadiyo ke apun apun rido jono obila se amon oshte kore chilo tahadi deho tahadi mato alabito hoye chilo. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's the end of verse 24. You read it verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. The creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was appropriate. So this is one of the most direct references to the beginnings of homosexuality. 
when you first see it in the Bible, it's in the story of Sodom. Two angels come into the city looking like men. And a mob of men surround the house because they want to have sex with them. Men want to have sex with the men. It's the first time we see it in the Bible. And how long do those men live? About eight more hours. And then God rained down fire on Sodom and destroyed the whole city. It's Jude verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You're reading seven, right? Mm-hmm. So when we look at it literally, that's the term for homosexuality. homosexuality And their sexual sin is associated here with their punishment. There's one other key passage on this in the New Testament. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Just a moment. Oh, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6. No, 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 it's 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither fornicators. That's people who have sex outside of marriage. Nor idolaters. That's the people who bow down to a, a Buddha. Nor, nor adulterers. Uh, that's the ones who are unfaithful to their marriage promise. Nor effeminate. Uh, the Greek word is for the a gay couple, the one who is more feminine in the gay couple. And, and the next word, the Greek word, is for the one that's more masculine in a gay relationship. So both of those, so homosexual sex is plainly condemned here. Now look at verse 11. And such were some of you. He's talking to the, the members of the church in Corinth. He says, some of you were idolaters. Some of you were homosexual. Some of you were unfaithful to your spouse. 
তোমার স্পাউস বা তোমার সঙ্গীর সাথে ভালো সঠিক ব্যবহার করতেছ তারপরে 11 পদ পড়ে যাচ্ছে but you are washed কিন্তু তোমরা ধৌত হয়ে আছো but you are sanctified তোমরা পবিত্র হয়ে আছো but you are justified তোমরা ধার্মিক গণিত হয়ে আছো in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of god প্রভু যিশু খ্রিস্টের নামে এবং আমাদের পবিত্র আত্মায় what's he saying এটা এখানে কি বলছে homosexual sex is evil যে সমকামী শারীরিক সম্পর্ক এটা মন্দ but it's not unpardonable কিন্তু এটা ক্ষমার যোগ্য না uh, a gay man or a lesbian woman can be born again cannot be born can 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 kin ekhon ei je je gay mane je purusha ekta je purush purusha akrishto ebong je me me proti akrishto hoy tara abar pur notun jonmo hote pare tader they can turn away from their their sexual life tara tader tara tader shar sexual jibon theke phire ashte pare I have at least two friends who have turned away from a homosexual life. Amar shorbonimno dui jon bondhu ache jara oi homosexual I have four of them. Amar char jon friend ache bondhu ache ba bandhubi ache jara oi shomokomota theke phire asche. Two of them have now married a woman and had children. তাদের মধ্যে দুইজন মহিলা বিয়ে করছে এবং তাদের এখন বাচ্চা আছে and they are living both in ministry now এবং তারা দুজনেই এখন মিনিস্ট্রিতে কাজ করছে the other two আর বাকি দুইজন they still have sometimes an attraction to men তাদের তাদের এখনো পুরুষের প্রতি আকৃষ্ট হয় but they don't act out that attraction কিন্তু তারা ওই আকৃষ্টের প্রতি কাজ করে না in the same way that you might have an attraction to someone that you're not married to সে একই ভাবে তোমার হয়তো এমন একজনের প্রতি আকৃষ্ট হতে পারে যার সাথে তোমার বিয়ে হয় না। You might have an attraction to a pretty woman you don't even know. অথবা তুমি হয়তো এমন একজন সুন্দরী মেয়ের প্রতি আকৃষ্ট হতে পারো যা তুমি জানো না। Many people have sexual attractions that they have to ignore. অনেকেরই আছে যাদের শারীরিক আকৃষ্টতা জাগে যা তারা ignore করে। So those men ignore those. তাই ওই পুরুষেরা সেটা সেটা So maybe they'll never get married to a woman. তাই হয়তো তারা কখনো মেয়ের সাথে বিয়ে হবে না। That's okay. তা ঠিক আছে। God doesn't force them or require them to marry a woman. ঈশ্বর চান না বা তাদেরকে জোর করতেছেন না একটা মহিলাকে বিয়ে করতে। He requires them to be born again. এটা কিন্তু এটা তাদের দরকার যেন তারা পুনরায় জন্ম নেয়। To turn away from self indulgence. যেন তারা আত্ম যেন তারা নিজেদের লালসা থেকে ফিরে আসে If you have a man who's tempted to steal যদি তোমার মধ্যে এমন একজন লোক থাকে যে চুরি করতে লোক আসে and he steals এবং সে চুরি করে he does this every day এবং সে এটা প্রত্যেকদিন করে you might say he's a thief তখন তুমি হয়তো বলতে পারো যে সে একটা চোর but if he's tempted to steal কিন্তু তার যদি চুরি করার লোভ আসে and he chooses not to steal এবং সে যদি সিদ্ধান্ত নেয় যে সে চুরি করবে না he chooses to obey god সে সিদ্ধান্ত নেয় যে ঈশ্বরকে ঈশ্বরের বাতও থাকে he does that every day এবং সে এটা প্রত্যেকদিন করে so he's not stealing anymore যেন সে আর চুরি না করে would you say that he's a thief তখন কি তুমি তাকে চোর বলবা he's not a thief সে চোর না he's tempted to be a thief তার চুরি করার জন্য মন বাসনা আসে but he's not a thief কিন্তু তা সে চোর না if you're tempted to commit adultery যদি তোমার ওই কি বলে ব্যভিচার করার জন্য লোভ আসে if you reject that temptation এবং তুমি ওই লোভ যদি এরিয়া চলো you don't do it তুমি যদি এটা না করো you're not an adulterer তাহলে তুমি একজন ব্যভিচারী you're a faithful husband তুমি একজন বিশ্বস্ত স্বামী so for my two friends তাই তাম আমার ওই দুই বন্ধুর জন্য they don't have homosexual sex তাদের যে তারা যদি সমকামী শারীরিক সম্পর্ক না করে they repress those things তারা যদি এই সমস্ত বিষয় দমিয়ে রাখে then they are faithful christians তাহলে তারা বিশ্বস্ত খ্রিস্টান you understand what i'm saying বুঝতে পারছো কি বলতেছে any questions about this কোনো প্রশ্ন এগুলো নিয়ে so it's a big topic right now তো এই যে টপিকটা এটা অনেক বড় i have 4 minutes left So let me just tell you a few more of the times you see homosexuality in the Bible. Bible le aro kichu jaygay tomra shomokami dekho kothay kothay ami eta bolchi. There's one time in the book of Judges. 
It's quite similar to the story of Sodom. Sodom and Mother Evolve. A group of men uh, want to uh, rape someone. And uh, they're given a woman. And they rape her until she dies. And at the end of that story, the ten tribes come to Benjamin. And they say, give us those perverted men. We're going to kill them. But Benjamin says no. We're going to defend them. And it leads to a terrible war. But eventually, almost the entire tribe of Benjamin was killed. Only a few hundred men survived. And that was one of the twelve tribes. Why were they killed? A few of them practiced homosexuality. The rest of them defended that small group. Homosexuality? Yes. You say that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just translate it, then I'll explain. The so, small group practice homosexuality. The rest of them were uh, defending that small group. And God destroyed the whole bunch. Now, Raya was asking. If they raped a woman, how is that homosexuality? But that's not what they were asking for. They were asking for men. And they were given a woman. So what were they? They were homosexuals or they were, uh, what's the word now, people say that they are both. Anyway, uh, they were perverts looking for homosexual sex. The next time you see homosexuality, homosexuality in the Bible, where can I find this story? In uh, Judges? If, if you want to find the story in the book of Judges, Judges 19 through 20. It's a big story in the Bible. The next time you see homosexuality is in the pagan temples. Many of them had male had male prostitutes. Um, and uh, the faithful kings destroyed that process. Alright, my time is up. Let me pray for you. Our Father in heaven, I thank you for the object lesson of the sanctuary. Teach us how to dress and act. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.